I'm Anna Webb. Welcome to A Dog's Life. you know how passionate we are about not using beagles for experiments well that's why we're jumping on zoom now to catch up with johnny beagle at camp beagle give us the latest on the petition and what's happening down at parliament on february the 19th oh welcome back it's johnny beagle from camp beagle Reporting live. How are you, John? Good. Very, very, very tired, but, you know, determined, committed. We've got the parliamentary debate coming up, which we've put so much energy into. Yeah, explain, really, because when you last came on, there was a lot of campaigning going on up there near Cambridge. Um, so a quick recap on where you're at and, you well, know, th- this may yeah. when we're going to Parliament on the 19th of February. Yeah. How long ago was that? Maybe a, was it a year? I think it was a bit more than a year, maybe 18 months, you know, John, actually. Mm. Yeah. We just lost track of time. And remember, since that time, whenever it was, say 18 months, there's been people here protesting on a 24-7 basis. We have never left this place for over two and a half years, which is quite extraordinary. And there must be something that's propelling us to do this. I can't tell you how much sacrifice and hard work has been, but it's because we've got to get, we've got to do something about this animal testing. Something has to give. There's been campaigners in this country for like over a hundred years. This goes right back to the suffragettes at the time, you know, it's crazy. And three years, two and a half years ago, when we began, it was so common for people to stop. And they still do now and say, I thought they'd ban that in the seventies. And Mm. they, they haven't. It's awful, isn't it? I mean, what is it then within government? What's the the sort of, you know, what's their get out of jail card? Inertia. Like, um, all the signs are there. But uh, uh, now it's getting frustrating because all the, all the energy is there, even from within the industry. The science is on our side, the, let alone the animal. The animal welfare has always been on our side. But it's maybe one of the tactical mistakes we've made about animal experiments is to concentrate, like you do, on the, on the extreme suffering that's caused. But it's, it looks like it's going to be the science that's going to get it stopped. And the science is there in buckets. Uh, even from within the industry, it's groaning under the pressure. But the government, like our debate, I tell you know, call me a, a fortune teller. I'll tell you what will happen at our debate, and it's so tragic. It won't be a debate. A debate has got two sides, hasn't it? Yeah. MP yeah. after MP will stand up, and they won't all. They won't all say we need to ban toxicology experiments today. A lot of them will, but a lot of them will say. I've looked at the issue on behalf of my constituents, and there is a glaring problem here. These these tests have not changed. They haven't been looked at. They haven't been independ- independently valued, independently evaluated. And there's a there's a mountain of scientific evidence to say that they're bad science. And the MP after MP will do that. And you you I remember last time I was getting goose pimples, and then at the end of the debate. The Home Office Minister, whoever that was, and that last time it was Sarah Dines, but they'll just send, you know, some innocuous minister along and they will read out really offensive, a pre-prepared statement that uh, 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 there is no problem. This is the most regulated country in the world for animal experiments. And it's just not good enough anymore, which is why we've taken this sort of mad, crazy direct action that we've done. Yeah, well, it needs to. It needs to change. I mean, I think, you know, surely in this age, though, now you say the science is on your side. I mean, clearly it is. But I mean, it's um, it's to use technology instead of animals. I mean, surely we can do this now with artificial intelligence. 
Yeah, I mean, we're all scared, aren't we? Like, artificial intelligence, it's on the horizon. It's already happening. You can have it on your mobile phone. And it, it's got some terrifying applications, but let's not be sort of complete Luddites. Oh, no, we can't move on. Of course, we've got to move on. And I'm not a doctor, but I've got a brain. And the application of artificial intelligence to, like, the biological sciences seems a bit perfect, you know, because an, the, with artificial intelligence, it can conduct, I think, billions of things at once, which is a bit like the body, you know? So, like I said, this is getting frustrating. Look, we've won the arguments. The arguments are there. So why aren't, why why the intransigence? An obvious reason for the intransigence is because of <clears throat> the large pharmaceuticals and your very large chemical companies like Syngenta and Monsanto and DuPont, who they don't want to rock the boat. The pension boards of those companies don't want to rock. Why should they change things? We This has been the way we've regulated this industry for 70 years, and they don't want to change. And they've got vested interests and power, but enough is enough. I couldn't agree more. Enough is enough. And, you know, in 70 years, so much has changed. I mean, what is also good and perhaps interesting is that pet abduction is has now been granted to become legislation, you know, because that all disappeared with the animal kept bill um, last year, you know, because dog theft is up and up and up. And, you know, dogs were considered as chattel in a court of law. So, you know, it was all um, involved with the theft act of 1968 you know and we know yeah. now in that time science has proved that dogs are sentient beings so th that going through parliament at the moment maybe is a little bit of a, a driver to 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 bring in because of the word abduction that they've used they've not called it pet theft they've called it pet abduction and that word's quite emotive and i think that could be relevant to the beagles in this instance well, it is big, and do you know, do you know what they used to do? And they, they, I don't, they don't do it now. Do you know they used to steal dogs in this country to su to supply them to the laboratories? Listen, and I, John, I, I've read the plague dogs. <laughs> I, I, I took part in raids back in the eighties at the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. I was there when we took the documents. I was there when we got home and saw all the the admission forms for the dogs, and these weren't. Uh, these were like collies who have been castrated who would give you the poor. They were ex-pets. And but because of our pressure then we 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 cut off that 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 trade, that, that despicable trade. And now we're left with this despicable trade. You know, it is interesting though that maybe government could be a bit more receptive this time around, you know, putting DuPont and the other companies to one side, in that, you know, if they've granted uh, pets abduction status because you normally abduct a child don't you you know yeah. so that that because that's kind of the surely this is the bottom line here you know I mean do you think this abduction switch by government is is something that's maybe useful to the beagles I hope so but what what they say about these beagles is that they're not dogs they're research tools and they don't need to be treated like dogs that's why like uh Today, these dog, the workers will leave at four o'clock and they will not come back until eight o'clock tomorrow morning. There's no, there's no night shift. There's not one person, not one low paid worker. At the weekend, the dogs are left from 11 a.m. to 8 a.m. the next morning. They're skidding in their own wee and poo. And the, 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 what the government have always said, these are not dogs. These are not normal dogs. And therefore, they do not need to treat be treated like dogs. Come on. No, no, that's... I mean, that's shocking. That is so wrong. But listen, I mean, there's, I mean, gosh, I mean, surely every animal welfare agency in this country must be on your side, John. Yeah, but I'm, I'm it's frustrating. Do you know, like, normally you want to garner public support and... We've got public support. We've won the no one's no one is is it, no, there's no one in this country that's going to stand up and defend how these dogs are treated before they go to the laboratory. That before they go to the laboratory, they never see the sky. Shocking. What's the problem? We're giving these dogs half an hour run today. I know they're going to get tortured at some point. Uh, I never thought I was coming to come here to do an, an animal welfare campaign. Why aren't these? Why are these dogs? They're not. They're not 
test tubes. You know, they're living, breathing creatures. And it was a mad idea 70 years ago. And I would suggest that the reason 70 years ago that Monsanto and DuPont wanted they wanted the, the, the new pesticides to be tested on a mouse and a dog wasn't to protect our safety. It was always to get it on the market. When you're sick, you don't go to the vet. It was always bad science. and that, But now with all these non-animal methods, the computers, the cell cultures, artificial intelligence, they're, they're, they're queuing up at the door. They're banging at the door. And still we're left with this arcane... And it's heartbreaking. So you can hear it in my voice. I'm sick of having the high moral ground. I'm bored of this position of people agreeing with me. Do you know what I mean? We want something done. Yeah, so what can people do, John? You know, I know there's going to be a protest and a debate, isn't there, at Parliament. I'm going to come down to that. Um, you've got huge celebrity support. I think Will Young is um, going to be down there and Joe Wood and, and many others. So. Roxy- um, who's on Dancing and Ice at the minute, loads, loads of uh, some women from Love Island, Faye Winters, uh, Gemma Collins, loads. People yeah. are always asking me, what do we do? I've been doing this. You, you, uh, <clears throat> I've been doing this for 40 years, campaigning against animal experiments. If I knew if there was one trick to do, if there was one thing to do, I would say it to you. I have no clear answers, but we're in a world today where people want they want like one trick pony. They want a quick solution. There's no quick solution to this except keep applying the pressure that we've now put on them for a hundred years. But it's got to pay off. So get involved. Write to your MP. Get involved with Camp Eagle. <clears throat> People often say to me, uh, one of the simple things will be, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to stop buying uh, products tested on animals. Yeah? Yeah. You will never see on the Camp Eagle post that as a prominent thing. Please uh, boycott animal tested products because I can tell you now, every chemical we use is tested. The cosmetics, we dealt with that in a way decades ago, and it's still a bit of a smokescreen. You cannot boycott animal tests because every chemical you use has been tested. We need to change the system. It yeah. can't. You can't boycott your way out of it. If you could, I'd say now, go to the when next time you go to the the pharmacy or the chemist and you want to buy some shampoo, look for that cruelty free logo. To be honest, we've moved on from that decades ago. That battle is won. The household products aren't tested anymore, but every single new chemical we, we use is. Do you know how many? I mean, I read the other day. Do you know how many chemicals are in use? Five hundred. Thousand synthetic chemicals are used. How it's crazy. Shocking. Well, it's terrible. I mean, it's really, you know, but the, the, the key bit I think you said earlier for me is that, you know, if, if you're ill, you humans don't go to the vet. You know, um, for me, I think it's daft testing anything on animals because your whole metabolism, your digestive system, nothing could be more different between a humans and a dogs and a beagles. So you're kind of not getting a, a true result anyway, really. It's not so- science. Sometimes, let, let's do the common sense thing. Say if you had some, say if I invite, say if me and you were old enemies and I invited you around my house, come on, let's bury the hatchet. Let's have a dinner party. Yeah, <clears> go on. <laughs> And there was a dog sitting next to you, wagging his tail. Your dog, you brought your dog along. No, no you, my dog, there's a dog or a cat. And you think, is, is, is this food been poisoned? And you put a little bit of food down for the dog and the dog's still wagging its tail. That doesn't mean to say it's going to be safe to you. It could be an indicator. If the dog was to fall, drop dead, it could be an indicator. But what is poisonous for the dog can be harmless to us. What's poisonous to the rat can be harm- harmful to the mouse. It's not science. If we want safety testing, we could flick a coin, and that's Monsanto could flick a coin with a new pesticide. Is it safe or isn't it? And at least then you'll get a 50% chance. Animal, the tests, the, the, the figures that we hear about, not over 90% unreliability. I'll repeat that, over 90% unreliability. Therefore, it's not science. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if well... it's science, why is it so much secret? Do you know, I remember going to school and learning some basic premises about science. The whole idea of science is that you have a theory, you do your test, you get your results and then you discuss it with your peers these 
animal animal testing is always shrouded in secrecy. The only people that are discussing it are me and you, and we can't get a, like um, uh, the, from here. The dogs go from here to LabCorp, a massive, massive big contract. Yeah, my love. Milo, Milo, a massive contract testing laboratory. You can't find anything out about what happens to the dogs after they leave here because it's all under client confidentiality. That is not science. Gosh, well, listen, everyone's got to sign the petition. I mean, well, the petition signed enough for the debate to happen in Parliament. I mean, it's great that action is happening. I mean, it's the only way to try to help yeah, the this eagles. Petition, this petition is finished. Uh, we, we, this is our fourth petition. Our, four, our first petition got 250,000 signatures. It's really difficult to get over the 100,000 barrier. It's not like a normal petition because people have to click it and then they have to get an email from the government. It took so much hard work to bang this one yet again over 100,000. And to be honest, I think this is the last one we're going to do within this current Tory regime. Um, and then God knows what's going to Going to happen with the next the next government, you know. I, I'm not well. Well, we're just going to have to see, you know. But it, to me, it's all about just keeping the pressure, 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 and then something has to give. Yeah, well, yeah, let's hope so. And in terms of government, I mean, you know, I I mean, the way I look at it is be dog friendly, you know, because it's a vote winner. But uh, what do I know? There's there's Um, such a political, there's there's so many votes to be had from this. There's a massive open goal at the minute for some politicians to, to stand up because I tell you, it's so popular, this campaign, you know, like torturing puppies. It's like something out of 101 days. Formations or something. Yes, and when yeah. you, when, and you've got scientists queuing up to support you. But we live in a world where I'm afraid your DuPonts and your Monsantos, they, they still hold sway, sadly and tragically. I know. I know. And um, I don't uh, necessarily <laughs> agree with that either. But we're living in a world more now, I think, you know, because of social media where exposure and choices, um, it's kind of more available to to do and air your opinions so um yeah but, I, th- I think um, once upon a time someone could put a shirt on and a suit and tie and with a posh accent and get on the telly and say things and people would believe them that, that hopefully those days are going now and the men in suits and ties they need to change the tune a bit and they need to start speaking the truth a bit more we're sick of double speak aren't we well, we are. There's no need for animal cruelty in the name of, you know, money and fake science. That's what I say, John. So listen, I'll see you down there. 19th, yeah. 19th of February, um, around noon, I think. Uh, well, we're gathering from noon, but the protest itself starts officially at two. But by all means, come down after noon and help us. We're going to do it slowly, slowly, but we'll be there noon. But really, it's from 2 p.m. Not 2 p.m. We'll, we'll want to start making the impact after that. Okay, great, John. Thanks for joining us today. All right, nice one, Anna. That's our show, Mr Binks. What did you think? Yes, I know you're very lucky to be an English toy terrier and not a beagle. Thanks again, of course, to Johnny Beagle. And the link to the petition is in the show notes. So go on, sign and share. See you on Sunday. Bye for now. (laughs) 